days of power. Something bigger than no, I see. Do something better than no, he has said. Do something greater than no, what I said. We're living in the days of power. We're living in the days of power. Do something bigger than no, I see. Do something better, no ears that yet. Do something greater, no one has ever done. We're living in the days of power. We're living in the days of power. And bringing us the presentation on career is someone, someone very qualified to speak on that subject because he has studied it to the very highest level and not just that he's been a first class practitioner in that field for years before going full time into academia he is the vice chancellor of the best university in this country and before i tell you why you must clap for him before I mention the university, you must give him a special round of applause for one reason. I have not even told you yet. <laughs> but during his tenure as vice chancellor, a rule has been passed, and it applies to you and to your family, that every member of the International Central Gospel Church going to Central University enjoys a 15% discount. That, that calls for a clap. Christ Temple, on behalf of Dr. and Mr. Temple, help me welcome the Vice Chancellor of Central University, Professor Bill Buena Populampo. Let's put our hands together as he comes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please resume your seats. Thank you very much. It is a joy to be in the house of the Lord. And it is a joy to bring you tidings from Central University as well as tidings relating to the subject matter for this evening. It is absolutely critical and very important that we touch on this issue of career planning. So I am grateful, very grateful, to the church, to the leadership of the church, for the opportunity to speak. I'm grateful for the introduction. And indeed, I lead your university, the best university in town. And as I speak, I will touch on one or two uh, opportunities over there. But I will stress, it is your university. Central University is Central Gospel Church's university. And it must have the imprint of the church without equivocation and without apology. Now, so I'm grateful to the leadership and to the agency of the Holy Ghost that is expressed through his man servant, Reverend Dr. Otterbill, who is my boss, and Lady Joy Otterbill. I am touched by their work and grateful for it. I will look this evening at the matter of career planning. It's about maximizing our potential, our achievements, and our possibilities. You see, 
there's a risk that sometimes when I'm in a place like this, I will end up preaching. But I will hold myself from that risk. So, the reality is that God has given us all things that pertain to life and to godliness. We have it. Having received everything that pertains to life and godliness, it is now our responsibility to organize our lives to attain the maximum possibilities therefrom. The check has been written. It's our responsibility to cash it. Our responsibility to cash it. And I'd like to say that everything we are going to talk about relates also to every aspect of our work. You may be in self-employment, you may be uh, working for somebody, you may, whatever it is that you're doing, everything we'll touch on this evening is relevant for you. So even if I don't make a direct uh, example of any particular type of career or type of employment, note that it is relevant for you. Now, we need to look at what a career is. Now, um, what is a career? The career that you have, that we have, that we experience, has to do with the processes and the experiences that each of us go through with particular reference to learning, to skill acquisition. So the career is not just limited to the time at work. The span includes the time you spend learning, acquiring certain skills, the time you spend searching for jobs, looking for appropriate work to do, looking for appropriate contracts and a certain time in, in self-employment, all of that constitutes your career. The work opportunities and the organizational experiences that each of us have also constitutes our career. And importantly also, it has to do with our growth through a chosen path. And you will find on the screen also maybe the path was accidental. Hmm? It may have been accidental. You stumbled into it by some whatever, I don't know. Maybe your dad dragged you or a friend dragged you into it. Whatever it is, it could be accidental. But the growth that you engage in, the time that you spend therein, chosen, accidental, or called, or otherwise, can become the process of your career. And in the ring over there, you have different, different opportunities, different types of potential careers. Business, finance, the arts, medicine, media, construction, the works, the whole, all sorts of different possibilities are there for us in respect of our career. Now, It is important that we take note of something here, and it is this. How do you spend the time to enhance the time and the times of your life? How do you spend the time to enhance the resources that are available to you with respect to economic gain? How are all the things that happen to you and to me, or the things which we cause to happen to us, connected together? When we talk career planning, career development, at the end of the day, there are three key things that must inform us, that must drive us, that must be important for all of us to take note. And these three key things are 
that we will be personally fulfilled, that we will be community engaged, and that we will be economically sustained. These three are absolutely critical. And towards the end of my presentation, I will add the fourth, which is that we are in God's chosen path for us. So all these experiences constitute our career. Now, sometimes people uh, get into a certain uh, amount of, uh, or a certain time of uh, trying to distinguish between whether a career is a vocation or a vocation is a career. Sometimes I don't, I don't like to trouble myself with those hair-splitting distinctions. Tonight, we're talking about your career, the time you spend at work, before work, outside work, and the different experience which you bring together your connection to personal fulfillment, community engagement, and economic sustenance. Now, let us look at some important tools which will help us in this journey. Your choices are choices in respect to career planning need to look at the following. What do you really enjoy or like or want to do or want to be? You've got to ask yourself that question. What do you like to do? What do you enjoy to do? What do you want to be? Also, another question. Is there a calling on your life? Now, uh, obviously for us charismatics, uh, when you talk calling, then every head goes for ministry. Mm -hmm. Callings are not only in respect of pulpit ministry or evangelism. No. You could have a particular calling on your life to make money for people. <laughs> yeah. You can have a calling on your life to heal people, not by the laying on of hands, but by your capacity to understand the human body and discern the situation with a particular body in front of you and apply appropriate medications. It could be your calling. Now, what examples do you have to help you make up your mind? So the point here is that talking career planning, career development, you should be looking out for particular examples that will help you to make up your mind about what career choices you should be making or whether you are in the right place or not. Now, let me also add that, you see, sometimes we get uh, worried. People get worried because they think that they don't know, uh, they don't know what they should be doing. Don't worry. Honestly, don't worry. Don't stress yourself thinking, I am 48 and I'm not sure whether I'm doing what I should be. Don't worry. Why do I say don't worry? Remember I said your career is a series of different things which make up your life, personal involvement, personal fulfillment, community engagement, and economic sustenance. So look at it as a whole. And also, if you're not quite clear, not sure yet, uh, don't worry again because it is not sequential. Hmm? Sometimes you can go very, very far and then you find what it is that you really want to do and you get pulled back. Hmm? You could be 60 and it is at 61 that actually the fulfillment and the impact of your career begins. And at that point, when you have allowed God to impact that, he'll give you another 40 years to fulfill it. So don't worry. 
far too many of us are stuck up on the idea that I am 42, I am 38, I am 50, and I'm not quite sure whether I'm doing it. Mean, don't worry. It is a combination of different things that make up your life. Instead of the worry, look at what you are putting into each of those different components. Respect God's shapings and moldings. And this is not the time to preach, but uh, Moses and Joseph. Huh? We all know where Moses was called from. <laughs> and we all know <laughs> the action that Moses engaged in which drove him into the place where he was finally called from. What was it? What was it? Murder. <laughs> Have you thought about it? God can grab us anywhere. Another point <clears throat> I'll make here is when you do get a job, at whatever point it is, be totally professional with that job. In GH, a lot of us treat our jobs with contempt. Stop it if you are in that habit. Treat your job, whatever job it is, with dignity and professionalism as unto God. Now, let me tackle the matter of how you grow your career. It is important that whatever stage of the career you are at, please note the following. Have a clear understanding of the requirements of that career. Okay? The politics of that career, the progression rules of your chosen profession, organization, or sector. Mm -hmm. Your promotion, your growth is not accidental. You must understand the requirements and the politics of growth in that organization. Now, you see, uh, what I know is I'm an academic, so that's what I know. So um, you cannot be a vice chancellor of a university as good as ours if you're not a professor. So the understanding of the politics by way of example is this. It doesn't matter how many times you come to the worship service. And the depth of your kolomo zokotodim apa. And the number of nights and the dry fasts. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter. If you are not a professor, you will not become a vice chancellor of a university such as ours. So understand the politics of your organization, understand the politics of your sector or of your chosen profession. That is fundamental. So look, let me liberate some of us from our challenge. Huh? Don't go and spend time worrying your pastor that somebody is sitting on your promotion if you have not understood how it is to get yourself promoted. Don't trouble your pastor. Don't. Don't. In fact, if I hear you troubling you, I will come and tell him myself or hey, my dad, please. This is not something you should worry your head about. So understand what the requirements are and apply yourself to those requirements with dedication, commitment, and focus. And when you make a mistake in respect of a career choice or an action in respect of your career processes, take corrective action. 
if you have offended a boss, go and plead forgiveness. If you've gone fine, you have not attained a certain level of qualification or understanding, go and get that qualification. Look, it is a cumulative process. Importantly, you must manage yourself, we must manage ourselves, and we must be emotionally intelligent. Emotional intelligence requires another sermon and another day, but it comes up to, it means boundary management and self-management. It's not everybody that should be your friend. Now, stage one considerations for career planning, the youthful years. Family influence in this time is very important. The family that you have, the circles you walk in within that family, they inform what you can do or what you cannot do and the opportunities that you have. So take that very seriously. If your immediate circumstance family is not an enabling one, may the Lord help you. But at the same time, Turn your eye onto another situation that could bring you the examples you need to have. You may not have to be in that family, but you can look at what is happening somewhere else and take encouragement from what is happening there without being there. Education is important. Let's spend time taking our education seriously. And let's get guidance. Let's get guidance. Ask, talk, consider, explore. Get guidance. Now, the place of education, very quickly, it gives you and I the opportunity to acquire some skills, to network, get to know some people and then to challenge our assumptions now I want to just spend two seconds three seconds on this last point challenging our assumptions the value of your career going forward is always going to depend on the extent to which you are willing to challenge the assumptions that you have about different things you're willing to think out of the box and willing to revisit things you have believed in but actually are archaic, old, and dysfunctional. Education can help you challenge your assumptions. Allow it to do that. So when you're in the classroom or in the training room or whatever and new information is coming, allow it to challenge your thinking. Sometimes I you know, teach some people and they're like, well, we don't, we've always done this. And I'm like, why? if you've always done it, that, why are you in class with me then? You know, get out. You came to learn something different. Allow the time to challenge you. At Central University, we have psychology, sociology, law, farm, D, architecture, physician assistant, etc. These are all there. You could access them. And our admissions are ongoing. I cannot but tell you that they are ongoing. Uh, you know, just, uh, you know. They are ongoing, so apply. It's talking about fifteen percent discount. It applies, so yeah, apply, and come and be challenged. But also, you need you and I need to position us. You need to position yourself, and this in searching for jobs. Note that. I asked an earlier question, what are you truly interested in? There's another part of this, that the job interview is also very important. Let me just say here that I have seen one too many people come to job interviews. And <laughs> the last time they read the advert they are responding to was the day they submitted the application and the interview is three weeks four weeks five weeks later sometimes two months later so as they come into the interview they haven't read the advert again 
since the day they submitted the application. Question one, question two, question three, and you can see they haven't read the advert again. Simple point, read the advert because it is the advert that is the basis for the interaction. Your attitude is an important factor. Your preparation of CVs is an important factor. The detail, I have read and seen some CVs that are so short on attention to detail, spelling mistakes from beginning to end. And that is your selling point. Sometimes it's important to do strategic voluntary work as well. Stay two considerations, consolidation. Now at this point, you've gone through your initial, you know, uh, education, etc., got a job and so on, or working for yourself. At the second point, you need to consolidate. And here, you need to assess the success and opportunities that you have in your career. And very critically, Engage in career development activities for yourself. New learning, new exposures, new experiences, new people to consolidate the career or the jobs you are in. This is critical. I mentioned that education is important, but I should point this out to you. Uh, a writer, Henry Minsberg, who's written a lot of books, said, let's move away from having MBAs to being managers. Sometimes we focus too much on the qualification. We should focus on the skills that you acquire because it is the skills that will put you forward in your career. Let's take note of that. Sage three considerations. Pause and reflect. Sometimes, depending on how your career is going, you need to find time to pause, to take a step back and ask yourself, am I doing this right? Is everything going okay? What should I change about what I am doing? There's a need for a time to pause and to reflect. State four considerations are, are you making an impact? And the equation you see, I don't understand it. <laughs> I know I don't understand it. It's just, it's to make a point that one part of the equation to lead, should lead into another part. Hmm? The two must balance or the two must speak the same language at the end. In other words, by the time you are getting to a certain point in your career, you should be making a certain type of impact. You should be having a certain brand for yourself. Are you achieving that? What does impact mean? Personal fulfillment? Community engagement, economic sustenance, alignment with God's will. These four are your impacts. Now, I want to touch on something for our ladies uh, just very briefly. We have a lot of ladies on the slide over there. Just a few questions. Is there a glass ceiling that is institutionalized discrimination in Ghana? No. And I hope our ladies agree with me. No. Are there cultural barriers? Yes. What are the issues that are pertinent that you need to take note of? Your decision to get married and your choice of husband, please. <laughs> if this husband of yours says he or she loves you, but cannot help promote your growth, think twice. Children and managing the home, it is your responsibility to do it right. Balancing wife, daughter, career, service, church. These are critical points 
for our ladies. Nobody can answer it for you, but the ladies on the slide have done it, and they have grown in it. Now, I just want to mention these tools very quickly, which help us in our career. Firstly, please be genuinely happy for other people when they grow in their careers. Honestly, be genuinely happy for them. Seek out forward-looking people and align with them. Maintain a very humble and humane spirit and be analytical and put money in its proper place that's very important I won't dwell on this one because it speaks the uh, but I like to show this slide so our people can let the slide roll and let us see something there is it rolling Watch carefully. <laughs> now, what does that tell us? Very simple. In your career management process, please take care to see how you organize each step and each decision. The ultimate is the goal. Not to make an impression at that material point. No, the ultimate is the goal. And you see the last uh, footballer, he had the goal in front of him. And typically, what would the Ghanaian player do? Shoot straight! But this guy took a sideways step. And that led to the goal. Sometimes in our career, we need to take some sideways steps. In terms of impact, in terms of recognition, in terms of money, take a sideways step. Ultimately, ultimately, it is the goal that you're looking at. Let me mention my own example. I graduated psychology in 1995 went out, did my master's, PhD, and then my growth as an academic started. Lecturer, senior lecturer, professor, associate professor, professor, etc. When I graduated in 1995, the top picture there was the month I graduated, hmm? June 1985. That month, I went to the vice chancellor's lodge. Hmm? the one beneath, and I took a photo and I pointed to the lodge and I said, I'm going to be back. <laughs> exactly 32 years to the month, June 2017, 1st June, the Council of Central University appointed me vice chancellor. <laughs> In your career, Visualize something in front of you, the goal. Visualize it and package it as an arrow and send it out. And then, in between, organize the different steps that you take to get there. Remember I said, remember I said, without being a professor, you cannot be a vice chancellor. So my visualization would not have materialized if I had not worked to become a professor. Commitment to country is important. Our country desperately needs people who are committed to their careers and serve. There are a number of career dangers. Let me touch on those. In the middle, the big one is greed. Unbridled greed. Irresponsible greed. It'll kill you and kill everything else about you. Disproportionate discontentment 
unable to settle, always thinking, oh, there's something else I ought to do, I should be, always allow God to settle your heart and allow you, as you do different things that you're doing, for God to shape that up for you. Political incompetence. Yeah. Inability to choose your battles and escalation of commitment to stupidity. You've made a wrong choice. The evidences are telling you that your choice in this particular case in your job is wrong. And yet, because you have made the wrong choice, you are escalating your commitment to your stupidity. Now, let me look at some impactful careers. He left us recently. Classic gentleman, Kofi Annan. And then he brought the big plane, and we were all happy. Dedication. Baron Paul Boating otherwise known as Boating of Achim and Wembley. Hmm? <laughs> Sam Jonah. Amata Edu. Georgina Wood. Nelson Mandela. Close to home, John Kufo. And some three journalists whose stories are very, very significant. Late Komla Dumo started life as a medical student, ended up going to do psychology, and then zeroed. That's why I said the football zeroed in on journalism and attained such significant heights by the time he passed away. Bernard Avler, 37. Kojopon Krumah, 36. Politicians. I'm ending the story with somebody who didn't know that it would be on, and so her head has come down, but it's my wife. And her example is one that I want to sort of end on. Investment banker, she was energized to choose this road because her mother used to work at the Bank of Ghana long ago. So I'm sure she saw her mother's skirts and like, is this one, I've got to follow my mother. BA Sociology, Econs, took the stock exchange exam, MBA Finance, then FCCA Accounting, decided to work one of the big investment houses, Data Bank, five, seven years, and then moved on to Oak Partners, five years, and then founded her own firm, which is leading right now. On her desk is a plaque that says, Boss Lady. But the point, the point of it is that she took time to understudy other people for 11 to 12 years. And packed in between all of that, different studyings to ensure that as she, and she just did something else, uh, but as she progressed, she knew how to handle the work that she was supposed to do. And that is what we each are supposed to do to do. Thank you very much. All right. It's your standing ovation and indication of your appreciation. <laughs> Christ Temple, Professor Bill Buena Popolampo. Thank you for thank your you, applause. You, you may kindly be seated. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Before I open this very exciting question time, I'll tell you, I asked somebody once, 